Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The AMA says media reports of drone near misses may not be accurate. The Augusta Westland AW609 proves its capabilities. Voters across the board reject ATC privatization. I'm Brie Cross, it is September 18th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Academy of Model Aeronautics has released a detailed analysis of the FAA's drone data. A close examination of 764 records, which were publicly released last month, reveals a more complex picture of unmanned aircraft systems activity in the United States than initial media headlines suggested. There are military crashes and a UFO sighting in the data. Only a fraction of the records were legitimately reported close calls and near misses, and some didn't involve drones at all. Dave Mathewson, executive director of AMA, said, quote, Without a doubt, there are some records of near misses that represent actual safety concerns and more needs to be done to address those. But our analysis also found that the number of near misses is substantially lower than the number that was previously presented, end quote. The AMA analysis also contains two sets of recommendations for the FAA. One set of recommendations relates to the FAA's handling of its drone data, and another set of recommendations proposes to ensure the continued safety of operating within the national airspace system. The Augusta Westland AW609 tilt rotor aircraft recently set a speed record on a 1,000 kilometer point-to-point -point journey. The aircraft flew from its Yeovil facility in southwest England to its Cascina Costa facility near Milan, Italy, a distance of 627 nautical miles, in 2 hours and 18 minutes. That's an average ground speed of about 270 knots. Augusta Westland says the AW609 will be able to connect to important cities such as London and Milan in about two hours, taking off and landing vertically from the city's urban areas just like a helicopter, flying at a cruise speed of a turboprop airplane in all weather conditions. According to Augusta Westland, combining fixed wing and rotary wing flight attributes, the AW609 provides at least 30% to 50% time savings when compared to using a combination of car, helicopter, and business jet, typically for travel destinations up to 700 miles away. The AW609 tilt rotor is expected to be certified by the FAA in 2017, with delivery scheduled to start soon after. After the break, a study says voters do not want to privatize the ATC. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. It appears that the concept of privatizing the air traffic control system is thought to be a bad idea by more than just those of us in aviation. According to a survey conducted by Global Strategy Group of 801 registered voters nationwide, Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, all opposed taking control from the Federal Aviation Administration and turning it into a private nonprofit entity by a nearly two to one margin. The report says that opposition to privatization may at least be partially due to the fact that voters think the FAA does a good job of managing the ATC system. Fully 67% of voters give the FAA a positive job rating overall, while only 16% says it does a not so good or poor job. When asked more specifically to rate the job the FAA does operating the nation's air traffic control system, 
80% of voters say the FAA does an excellent or a good job, and only 14% rate the FAA negatively. Voters are very clearly expressing an if-it-ain't-broke-don't-fix-it attitude about the FAA and privatization. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for a and CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Most all of us have probably encountered some sort of form that asks the question of age, color, and gender. This week, Jim brings up the question of how these factors fit into, or don't fit into, aviation. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. Well, uh, first of all, thanks to all of you for your initial input on the Let Bob Fly project. Over the next few days, we're going to be unveiling a lot of things. The website is now live, and there's a number of other things that are going on. But uh, stick to Airborne and Aero News and Aero TV, and we'll tell you more. But in the meantime, I actually wanted to address something that's popped up a little bit in the last couple of weeks based on conversations I had at Oshkosh this year. One of the things that we noted were we saw a different generation of people at Oshkosh in greater numbers than we'd ever seen. We saw people of color. We saw whole families, younger people. We saw a lot more women, and of course, a lot of that is to be credited in no small way to the efforts of Peggy Chabrian and, of course, the Women in Aviation Program, as well as the 99s and others. But one of the things that was interesting is I uh, actually had the bravado to walk up to a number of folks whenever the opportunity seemed proper and speak to them. I talked to people of color and different uh, age groups and genders and just said, what brings you to Oshkosh? We're noticing that Oshkosh this year is more diverse than it's ever been. What's bringing you here? And more important, what kept you away from here, if anything, previously? And one of the things that did pop up was for those who had been here and not seen people who quote unquote looked like them and looked around at them and basically saw the old white guys club every year after year after year, they noted that the community was getting more diverse. They felt more included, they felt more welcome and more inclined to tell their friends and their generations and their communities that maybe this was an activity they should look at. But I wanted to bring up one particular interesting thing Depending on who you talk to, the uh, female aspect of aviation uh, hovers between 5 and 10% of various activities, maybe a little bit more in areas, maybe in less. The African-American population is all over the map, depending on where you look at it. The younger proportion, of course, is way all over the map, although except it's, we're seeing some hope in the student start area. But if we were to just simply double those numbers, if instead of 5 to 10% women, we saw 10 to 20% women, if we saw more African Americans, if we saw more Hispanics, if we saw more people of all uh, ethnic variations and, and communities, and if we saw people of all ages, especially younger, because let's face this, a lot of us aren't getting any younger, what would happen to aviation? And the fact of the matter is we saw a little bit of that Oshkosh with better numbers than we've had in a long time. Scratch your head a little bit and just see if that doesn't add up to something. We as a community need to be more welcoming. We've got to stop being the old white guys club. We've got to be the colors of the rainbow, every gender, every variation, no matter what's going on out there, every age, every community, every interest area. And most important of all, we've got to let aviation look like the rest of the world. And then maybe more of the rest of the world will become part of aviation. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, the U.S. Senate looks into reducing GI Bill flight training benefits. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics Single Band ADS-B, ATX100, and ATX100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI340 Quattro tso airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip with integral backup battery. Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero.
Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A House version of a bill capping funds available for flight training through the GI Bill is awaiting action by the full House. The Senate is now taking up discussion on the bill that restricts funds for veterans seeking a flight training college degree. Airbus is now officially manufacturing airliners in the United States. In a much-anticipated ceremony in Mobile, Alabama, Airbus inaugurated operations at its first-ever U.S. manufacturing facility, which will assemble A319, A320, and A321 airplanes. The FAA had issued an airworthiness directive for the type of engine on a British Airways 777 that suffered an uncontained engine failure on takeoff in Las Vegas. GE, the engine's manufacturer, says that this particular engine was not covered by the AD. The U.S. Air Force expects to increase the number of B-2 stealth bombers available for combat by one full jet and reduce the fleet sustainment costs significantly. Under contract modification, Northrop Grumman will give each B-2 a major overhaul once every nine years. Rolls-Royce has delivered its 2000th AE2100 turboprop engine. The engine was installed onto a U.S. Air Force C-130J by Lockheed Martin. This AE-2100 engine has proven itself with more than 8 million combined flight hours. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Labor unrest in the airline industry is not unusual, but this time it set a record, at least for NetJets. Approximately 800 pilots and members of their families gathered at seven picket sites across the country last Thursday to send a message to NetJets management. The message from the NetJets Association of Shared Aircraft Pilots was that wages barely keep pace with inflation and that a diminished health care package is unacceptable. The convergence of almost 800 pilots in seven cities represented the vast majority of members who were able to attend. Those who were unable to attend because of their work schedule donated more than 4.2 million hotel points 2.5 million airline miles, and $10,000 in cash to help others make the trip. The Pilots Union and NetJets have been engaged in contract negotiations since June 2013 and in early May of this year began bargaining with the assistance of the National Mediation Board appointed mediator. The parties are scheduled to resume contract negotiations later this month. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Monday.